Okay, wait, wait for a while. A couple of more guys coming. Um. Okay, we have um. Yeah, we have Xun Tao joining and Alexander. Um. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another uh, uh community meeting for Never Graph. Um. So today we will have uh, uh, one uh, topic, uh, apart from the project updates, uh, by uh, uh Tao, which is uh, Dr. Xun Tao, which is our um, uh, staff engineer in Nebula Graph. Uh, so before that, we can have a quick uh interview of everyone, uh, like a round table and um. I'm not sure if you can you can connect uh, you can do audio or video, uh, Alexander. Uh, welcome. Mm, yes, I can do audio. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I will start from myself. Uh, this is uh Wei Gu. I I'm I'm from the team uh, of Nebula Graph. Um, uh, my head that I'm wearing is called the developer advocate. So anyone, most uh, most of people in the community will see me uh, more often than other, than other guys. So feel free to ping me in Slack or GitHub for anything. Uh, yeah, and may maybe uh, Alexander, you can help introduce yourself too. Uh, yes, my name is Alexander. I'm the head of technical department, and we just uh, started the journey with uh, Nebula Graph. Uh, so we understand architecture and other questions, uh, and now go deep into analytics and other one. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, in the end, we will have a sync discussion, so we can have more um discussion or question and. Uh, answers uh, then and uh, thanks again Thank to join us uh then uh, i see john is li listed uh in the upper size uh you can introduce yourself hi uh, everybody this is zong tian from uh, vsoft i'm uh, very happy to be here um so so welcome um for everybody okay thank you and finally, our uh, our presenter today, uh, uh, Xun Tao, could you quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Xun Tao. I'm an engineer from Nebula Graph. Um, uh, I, uh, before I joined Nebula Graph, I was a kernel engineer from Alibaba Cloud. I worked uh, uh, mostly on cognitive databases or RTP databases. I'm kind of new to the graph databases kernels, but I find it uh, very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Welcome, Welcome. to join our community meeting today. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, then I will quickly go through uh, our latest uh, news in, in, in the in the project. So uh, we will have the meeting every four weeks. So we'll, this is our place to have sync discussion as some sort of uh, topic sharing. So anyone would like to bring any topics or want to share your uh, stories on how you uh, create something on top of uh, Nebula Graph or with uh, or uh, to Nebula Graph, feel free to let us know and share here. Uh, yes. Uh, so we actually skipped one uh, of the term of the meeting uh, a month ago before it, it was a long uh, public holiday in China. Sorry for that. So, and in, in last uh, uh, two months, we have a bunch of uh, new uh, PR merged in, in both our uh, graph database core and the surrounding projects. So I just picked some of them uh, that were worth it to mention. Uh, so we, are, we have a bunch of bug fixes and improvements. So these are uh, some notable ones. I will quickly go through, but you can feel free to uh, check out the release notes. Um, actually, we just released the 3.3.0 today, this afternoon in, in, in the Asian time. Uh, and uh, like uh, weeks ago, we have a minor uh, update in uh, 3.2 as well. Uh, so this is uh, uh, like uh, we, we introduced the Vertex filter uh, in this processor, so uh, again, neighbor processor is one of the uh, processor when you are doing Go uh, from. 
uh, and this is a, a configuration uh, items that you can optionally, if you know what you are doing, uh, to switch um, the operating system page cache for RAFDB. We add it uh, as a, a configurable uh, switch. Uh, and there, you know, yeah, this 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 one was highlighted because it's contributed by one of a uh, new contributor. So it's around the optimization on the shortest path. And this is sort of a, a long waiting feature that uh, we support uh, um, filtering, conditional filtering on the properties when you are doing the subgraph together with the the fine path. Previously, we don't support the vertex property filtering in, in the fine path. And now uh, the both uh, vertex and uh, edge filtering can be supported together with the um, subgraph and fine path. Uh, so this is a, a, a strange new um, uh, processor called get this by a source. So it, uh, we introduced this to uh, even pu push the uh, Go query uh, even further in the performance uh, uh, perspective. And this is big. Um, previously, in like 3.0 or 3.1, we introduced the, um, the bare vertex. So those vertex has no um, tags. But uh, after like two um, minor versions, uh, it turned out uh, we hear from the, the voice from the community. It's not uh, that useful, but still bring more com complex uh, cities and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the good thing is less than the bad thing. So we decided to switch this off by default. So if anyone, some rare, uh, in some rare cases, some user relies on this feature, it's still, uh, Ha, uh, ca uh, the capability was capped, so you can use it. But by default, from the three point three point oh, it's by default turn uh, switched off. Oh, this one is worth it to be mentioned because uh, previously we 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 put uh, a bunch of different uh, community only uh, the experimental uh, only features uh, with only one switch. That means if you want to use one of them, you have to switch all of them. For example, if you want to use the data balance feature and you switch the experimental flag on uh, on true, uh, that will that that uh, will lead you have to use another feature called the toss, uh, the transaction over storage side, which isn't intended in most of cases. For now, we sp uh, split them into different specific uh, flags. So if you want to uh, use data balance and only use it without enable the toss, you can switch the experimental flag uh, on, and then switch a uh, separate uh, data balance uh, uh, configuration on. And that's doable uh, from 3.3.0. Uh, we optimize the pro uh, profile result, so it's, it's more readable. And we add another function. So this was, was uh, contributed by me. Uh, you can now uh, pass your uh, you know JSON string into a, a hash map now. So some in some cases you have to put uh, you know a giant uh, JSON string as one property. Uh, you can leverage this function to make your life easier. Uh, so for the other perspective, uh, other uh, surrounding uh, projects, uh, one of the big thing is that uh, we support um, session pool now in in all the officially uh, supported uh, clients. Um, so it's already released. We actually released them today uh, in Go, Java, C++, and, and Python. And another thing is uh, a, a Python ORM was donated uh, to our community. It's called uh, uh, Nebula Carina, if I pronounce it correctly. And another thing is we have a new, uh, another uh, project donated to uh, Nebula Contribute organization. It's called the Nebula Real-Time Exchange. So it's have a similar name with our Nebula Exchange, which was based on Spark. So this one is based on uh, uh, Flink CDC. For now, it's only connected with uh, MySQL. So you don't have to, uh, you know, wear your uh, watcher on, on MySQL bin log and wear it to Kafka or, or Flink and then connect it to Nebula Graph. 
from now you can leverage this new projects. So everything is uh, connected after box. So you can uh, just ensure your, your schema was not changed in, in your MySQL. So you can, you know, do it in a real time uh, fashion with this. So if you're interested, just check out this uh, projects. It's, it's uh, contributed by uh, a, a college student, as I know, a very cool project. Uh, for other things, oh yeah, this this one was a, a PR merged by a, a new contributor that he uh, introduced a quite sweet uh, cast uh, function. So you don't have to know all the types of given results. Uh, you just cast it. So everyone, everything will be uh, serialized in a expected way. So it's much easier for the developers. Uh, and we, we have a new release on uh, Kubernetes op operator. So with this uh, new new release, we have uh, uh, we have the control plan um, image in, in uh, ARM uh, sub architecture support. And we al also support uh, multiple data paths. Previously, we, we assume every pod has only one data uh, volume uh, connected. So, but now it's, uh, you can bring uh, more of them. Um, another one that is not yet merged to master, but uh, in a separate branch, uh, uh, one of uh, another uh, university students contributed this project to enable you can do the you know query um, on top of uh, uh, to be consumed by a neighbor graph algorithm. Previously, we bypassed the graph D. We 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 do the uh, scanning. Uh, directed connecting to to the um, storage layer so most case no most of cases this is the best way but in 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 some cases you still want to doing the uh, graph algorithm on top of a small uh, set of data that uh, you are you want to rely the the flexibility of the ngql query so this is doable in this branch now but not yet merged but if you are interested just watch this uh, this work uh, yeah, this is a related Nebula Graph analytics. It's not open source. It's our uh, um, enterprise only offering. So in, in this product, uh, we have three, uh, four more uh, algorithms introduced. Uh, another final thing is that our uh, Nebula Graph Studio. We have a new release today, 3.5. So uh, we have a bunch of new uh, changes. Maybe I can have a demo in, in next uh, meeting four weeks later. Uh, two of them are uh, need to be highlighted now. One is we have a you know a drag and drop uh, uh, GUI interface to you know create schemas, so it's quite fancy. Another thing is we have a starter uh, page that you can easily have some bootstrapped uh, uh, example data set to be injected just with, with one click, so it's something uh, new. So that's all, all from my side from the uh, project updates. So maybe I will give the uh, screen share to uh, Dr. Xuntao. Okay. Can stop sharing. Uh, it seems like I can now share my screen. Okay. How about now? Uh, yeah, works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, can I see my slide? Yeah, I can see. Okay, 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 let's begin. So, hello everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Xun Tao from Graph. Today I'm going to talk about our ongoing project on optimizing the main memory data structures for the Graph. Uh Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm going to talk about uh, mainly two parts. The first one is on uh, main memory data uh, data structures in Nebula Graph, uh, uh, including our current implementations, the uh, current problems that we are addressing, and uh, the technicals on uh, what we are doing and the and some preliminary performance results. And then I'm going to talk about some future work on our abandoned table, which is a uh, which is a major player in the main memory data structures and other uh, projects in parallel that we are working uh, on uh, currently. 
So first slide, uh, come to the banding table. So banding table actually consumes um, the majority of main memory uh, spaces if you run a graph query uh, within Nebula Graph. So it's a, it's a main target of our uh, optimizations uh, in our daily job. So what is a banding table? And in this figure, I give an, uh, an example of banding table uh, with re respect to a local execution. So imagine that you are trying to execute a match query, uh, which is to find the players that is connected to a uh, team Duncan uh, where uh, an edge tab of lack. So basically this query is asking uh, what player, uh, uh, who are the players that team Duncan likes. So to answer this match query, we have an execution plan consisting of several operators here. Uh, the, the the final one, uh, the, the bottom one is an index scan, which is to uh, scan a vortices with a time, uh, with a name team Duncan. And from that vortices, we need to traverse a graph, uh, traverse a graph uh, to uh, to find all the all the vortices that is linked to the team Duncan vortices uh, where the where edge whose type is lack. And then we need to append the a destination what is this into a data set and we do uh, finally do a projection and we will have our result uh, which are the names of these players okay so between each adjacent uh, pair of operators the banding table is here for them to exchange data for example when the index scan operator uh, loads data from the storage and uh, and does its uh, scanning of the data where an index on the player's name it will produce a banding table consisting of vortices and its uh, outer bound edges. And from there, we traverse the graph and add more, even more data into that banding table. And at this stage, the banding table will consist of the, the vortices that is linked to Team Duncan via this, via this edge. And finally, you, uh, we append uh, all the vortices uh, in, uh, in addition to their properties still in the form of banding table and where we do the final projection. So banding table is basically like a, a, a working desk that we uh, continuously uh, add some data or re remove some data from it to proceed our query processing. And so it's very important to boost the memory consumptions of a query execution as well as overall performance. So this is, this is an, uh, an example of the raw banding table in a local execution plan. Uh, as you may know, that Nebula Graph is actually a distributed database and we uh, separate uh, computation from storage. So in, in this example, I show a full functionality of banding table in the real uh, banding, uh, Nebula Graph setup, distributed setup currently in, uh, in the community version. So basically we're talking about two services here. One is a storage, storage D, uh, which is a storage layer, and another is a graph D, which is a computation layer. So uh, in the previous query plan, we need to do a scan of the storage to find the vortices of Team Duncan and its outer bound edges. So this operation is pushed down from the computation layer to the storage D services here in the, the green uh, the green one. So it, this is the operator that is pushed down from the graph D. So this green operator is go going to generate a banding table consisting of the vortices and then outer bound edges in the main memory of the storage D. So, the, the rest of the processing will happen inside uh, the graph D, which is in another uh, service. Uh, it could be in, in another physical machine or could be in another Docker. It, so the, this binding table needs to be transferred to the graph D node via the RPC call, uh, in which we need to serialize uh, this data structure, mean memory data structure to a network packets and transfer it via the network uh, network to the graph D and deserialize, which is to de uh, reform this spanning table inside the main memory of the graph D so that the rest of the processing can go on. So in this uh, execution flow, there are several overheads associated with the spanning table. As the first way, the, the green operator is, is going to write a, a large amount of data into that spanning table. Although we are talking about very simple query here, uh, in real world applications, it, uh, this spanning table could be very huge. And there is an overhead associated with serializing this spanning table into network pack packets. And also the network of transferring it via the network and the overhead of uh, deserializing it in the main memory of the graph D uh, service. And of course, the, there are overheads re uh, 
cost by reading this binding table to uh, as inputs to each of the operators as well as writing into the binding table uh, to materialize results and so on. So, so there are several overheads associated with binding table and this binding table consumes uh, not only a memory spaces, it also consumes our network capacity. So this is the main target of uh, main memory data structure optimizations uh, we are talking about today. So there are, in our current implementation, there are several issues associated with bounding tables. Uh, firstly, uh, in our current community, community version, we are using STR libraries to uh, to uh, to implement this data structure, which is basically a CDDQ consisting of uh, raw records. So raw, raw record is a class that we define to host, uh, to, to store the data of a record consisting of multiple columns, and each column is a value within this record. But at the uh, outer side, it's basically a CDDQ. So, so we, we are relying on the C++ STR data structure here, uh, for the implementation of bounding table. And within uh, this uh, raw record, there are actually uh, big memory consumptions to store the data as well as type because we allow users to uh, use different data types for a single property. For example, for uh, the, the age property of a player, you could, uh, you could specify its age using flow numbers or using uh, integer numbers or using even uh, strings. So it's all accepted. So this results uh, in the fact that uh, for for a value for values of the same property, it actually contains of data with different types. So we, we need to store the data as well as type together uh, inside the value data structure. And this value is often uh, nested. So a value could be uh, could be a built-in type like integer or float. It can also be a data data type like list map or node or, or, or add and so on. So this value could be very huge uh, inside the main memory. So this is our current implementation and we'll talk about the detailed uh, implementations later. So there are some um, problems to address. Uh, firstly, we need to still uh, continue to allow the users to have various data types for the same property. This is a, a necessary functionality. We cannot sa uh, sacrifice this. So this is something that uh, conventional RTP databases uh, they do not allow, but we allow that in uh, graph databases. And there are big serialization and deserialization overheads uh, among the distributed nodes of the bending table. So this could be very huge and it, it could be even, uh, it could cost more time than the transferring the data via the network, although it's a main memory operation. And our current implementation on bending table does not support batched or vectorized processing. So it limits uh, the, the things that we can apply in the query engine to improve performance. And we need to uh, refactor this, this min memory data structure so that we can do more inside the query engine to improve the performance. And we also need to increase end-to-end -end performance and quality of services. Uh, here, a main factor that is uh, limiting our QoIs is that the banding table consumes too much memory, uh, memory spaces and our query engine can often uh, run into OM um, crashes because the query takes too much memory and that will hurt our general availability of the, the, the graph services. So we want, we, we want to address that. We want to improve our overall performance as well as, uh, as, well as our quality of services. So these are some basic problems that we, uh, that we need to address at the level of the banding table. Okay. So. So, so this is our optimization goals. We want we, we want to support multiple types. Uh, by types, we mean uh, it con uh, consists of built-in types like, like integer and float, of course. And there are also some graph graph types like node, edge, map, list, and, and so on. So basically, these types are, are a, a container of the the built-in types, and they, they are used quite frequently. Uh, during the processing of a query. So it's very important to support them and also to support them in an efficient way. And we want to avoid rebuilding the binding tables in the, in the main memory every time uh, after we uh, transfer it from the storage C to a graph D. It's very costly. So we want to reduce the network cost. We, we want to, to um, we, also, we also want to make the binding table durable during execution. So this feature is desirable um, because we need to um, 
for, for, for quite often that the query a graph query can be very huge. It may take a lot, uh, a lot of mean memory to finish, and but for each machine there is only a limited number uh, of mean memory capacity. So 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 we need the, the capability to pro, to finish a query even if we do not have sufficient mean memory capacity. We can do this by using a very big virtual memory and using the disk spaces to, to fill in the gap. But to achieve that, we need to, to materialize some, some binding table from the main memory to the disk during the execution when it is not immediately needed by the computation. And we need to load that binding table back to the main memory when it is needed. So by using the virtual memory backed by the huge uh, uh, durable storage, we could make a, a, a very resilient query processing that is uh, capable of uh, processing arbitrary large queries. So, so and, and the one Uh, hi, Xuntao. Sorry, maybe there is a, a network glitch in your side. We can we cannot hear you. Could you hear me? Uh, I will ping her. Ping him. Just a second. Just a second, I will, I will, I will chat with Xun Hao, just a sec, sorry. Um... It is now, Ma. Oh. Now we can hear you. Okay, okay, that's good. Sorry, probably something something wrong with my microphone. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, let me continue. Yeah. Okay. Please. Can I see the slide? Uh, maybe this okay. the, the previous one. Oh, maybe the previous. One. Okay, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so previous one, yes. So basically, this is a summary of our optimization goals. We want to support uh, various types and uh, reduce their memory consumptions. And by types, we mean the built-in types, of course, and, uh, and most importantly, the graph types, uh, which are the data structure to store the node IDs as well as all their properties.
It seems that we are losing Dr. Chen again. Yep. Uh. Sorry for this. Networking in China mainland isn't that stable when connecting Zoom. Uh, I'm checking with him. Oh, he's still um optimization doing optimization on the network thing. Just a second. Like. I shouldn't talk. Sorry for this. Um... Oh, dropping again. It's trying. At Porsche, uh, about yeah. Yes. Um. Just, I would just would like to explain to you when we're waiting for you now. Ma. Okay. Are we can. You, we can see you now. <laughs> you can see me, but you can't hear me. Yes, we can. Yes. We can hear. Okay. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm using my my laptop directly. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Right. Yeah. So this is a uh, summary of our uh, organization. You're you're not sharing uh yet. Oh, you're not sharing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so. Okay. Hey, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's go. let's continue. So sorry for the for the so for for the voice issue. So so we we basically we want to uh, reduce the, the serialization and deserialization cost of bending table because we uh, not only need that to reduce the the memory uh, the data transfer overhead within the distributed setup. We we also need that to support uh, the 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 capability to process arbitrary large queries. Uh, because in which we, we probably need to materialize a bending table during the execution so that we can use the the huge uh, storage capacity to form a virtual, uh, very very large virtual main memory uh, for us uh, so that we can process a query whose uh, who's working set is larger than the physical DRAM set. So, so we, 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 we need a bending table to be easily durable during the execution uh, so that we can achieve that. So this is one of our major optimization goals. And we also need to refactor the bending table so that we can uh, we can achieve uh, batch the processing, vectorized processing, and so on. Uh, for, for this type of optimizations, they need to add, exercise a batch of sequentially stored data within the main memory. So uh, the, our current implementation cannot deliver that. 
uh, so that we, we need to change the, the data formats. And of course, we, we need to reduce uh, the memory footprint. Okay, so so this is our current implementation of the uh, of the uh, of the the data. It's it's basically a, a union of a set of uh, values of different data types. So here we have, uh, for example, eight byte integers, thirty two byte integers, float, double, and so on. We also have the data types like list, map, node, and edge. Uh, here, for example, for a node type, it it contain, contains of a node ID. And uh and a very long uh list of properties. So each property is actually a map. Uh, uh, it's a map is a, a pair of a string and a value. So we can see that this this data structure has several problems. Uh, of uh, firstly, they use out of place memories. For example, here the list and map node edge and so on. They are all pointers to other places. In the main memory, so we are using that out place uh, out of place memory. So there are two issues associated with 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 this. Firstly, when when we are free the memory resources of a data union, we need to free this union itself as well as uh, the memory spaces pointed uh, to by this uh, pointer, and that can make the the free of memory spaces very slow after we have finished the processing of a query. And another problem is that when we are deserialize or serialize the bounding table, we need to reallocate these memories for all the, all of these pointers and store the data there. And all of this data they are not stored sequentially uh, because of we are using this this kind of structures. And uh, for this list, map, node, and add, and so on, they are all nested data types, uh, quite complex uh, for the memory usages. And if you are familiar with C++, you know that the actual size used by a union is bounded by its largest member. So for example, although the, the minimum member of this data is, is a bool type, it only uh, occupies one, uh, one bat, but its actual size is bounded by the, the size of the, this very large member like double, all these pointers. They are all eight bytes. I think they can, they are all very contains a lot a lot of bad. So this union is actually very large, although for many cases it only uh, stores very short data. So there are many uh, padding uh, within this uh, data union. So this is uh, so there are some problems with the union uh, data union. So there are also problems that we uh, we have for the data types uh, because we are allowing users to specify the data types for. Uh, various data types for the same property. So we need to store the type for each data element. And currently we are using a 64 uh, integer uh, for this uh, eight byte integer for this type uh, uh, enum, uh, for this type enum. And um, it actually co consumes a lot of uh, memory spaces because we only have like uh, uh, a tens uh, a, a little bit more than ten number uh, ten uh, types, but we are using a very large uh, uh, spaces for the type information, and this is quite um we cannot simply reduce the size of this data structure because we are storing the da data as well as type in in an array of structure way, so it's basically a very large array contains of a very uh, a lot of structures and within each structure there is a data and its type. So if we reduce a type, for example, to one character, and because you are storing it in, in addition to its data in a same structure, the C++ compiler will add some padding into this type uh, enum, and it is still it is still going to uh, cost, for example, eight bytes in the main memory. So, so we, we can't have to use 64 bit main memory if we are continue to use this array of structure uh, uh, layout for our bounding table. And this is very costly for memory spaces. So this is our current imp implementation and we want to uh, improve it. So to um, this slide, I summarize some of the techniques, uh, some of the basic techniques that we are uh, 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 we are using to optimize the row store, the, the, the spaces uh, used by each record. We are introducing the concept of volume record, which is uh, which is a record that is uh, able to 
uh, use memories uh, of variable uh, lengths, and it's very quite adaptable. And it's going to store all nebula value in place. So there will be no pointers that is pointing to other spaces in the main memory. So we are re we're removing all these pointers and storing all, all its data sequentially uh, all together in the main memory. So by removing these pointers, we are not using out of place memories. It's going to support uh, faster allocation and deallocation. De it's also going to make the serialization and deserialization much faster. And we, we are going to sequentially store all the uh, all the, the the data for all the records in main memory chunks. So, so these are some of our basic optimizations. And we are also introducing a memory management. Uh, currently in Nebula Graph, we do not have a mem memory uh, management module. We are relying on the uh, as a PMR uh, uh, function of C++, but uh, for, the, uh, for the time being, we are introducing this functionality. So with memory management, uh, we can avoid the allocation and the allocation of very small memory pieces that are scattered random, randomly in the main memory. We can reduce the memory fragmentations. We can also improve the memory allocation uh, performances of small memory pieces. So in the query engine, there are actually a lot of places that we are frequently using small memory pieces. So this can be uh, in, uh, improved uh, significantly by the memory management. And uh, we want to in the, return all the resources back to the memory arena at the end of a very big query instantaneously so that that memory resources could be released and used by other uh, queries. So currently in our current version, we, we have this problem that we are releasing memory uh, at a very slow pace uh, because for each data element, we are using a lot of out of memory pointers. And all of these pointers are basically pointing to random spaces within the main memory. So it's very slow to release all of them. So by, by removing that and to release all the memories of the memory chunks altogether back to the memory arena, we can achieve instantaneous memory release that could uh, help us to, uh, to, to, to reduce the memory pr pressure after we have processed a very big query. It's very, uh, uh, this function is actually uh, very uh, necessary for us to reduce the risk of uh, out of memory uh, crashes. And we want to support the processing of arbitrarily large queries with bounded mean memory capacity. That this is also uh, 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 this is can also be done if we have made the binding table easily durable. Okay, so all of these optimizations are what we are doing on the current ROWS layout of the binding table. So by ROWS we mean we are uh, storing uh, each record one by one, and within each record we store all their properties uh, all together. And we are also going to Hi, Jinta, could you um, hear me? We, we lose you again. Or should just uh, answer your question. The bind table is just uh, how we uh, structure data in memory in inside of a memory graph. Yeah. Yeah. Starting. Yes. 
So can I ask a quick question while he's coming online? Yep. So um, what's the story on the backup? Backup? Yeah. Uh, you mean the backup restore? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the, now the, the backup restore, uh, supports the uh, object storage and the local storage, but, uh, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if we support uh, the, the HDFS, but, uh, S3 is supported. So basically, um, uh, there is an agent there and help you manipulate the underlying SST files and then make them, uh, place them into uh, either its local uh, file system or uh, push to the uh, object, object storage, S3. So um, when I was talking to B a uh, couple of uh weeks ago uh he was mentioning that there was a, an issue uh with the backup restore feature mm -hmm. and it is not working in the um in, as expected was it resolved um sorry maybe we can talk this uh okay later okay later. no worries okay okay no <laughs> yeah, worries yeah. uh Shintao, we can we can see your screen now. Can you uh are you are you are you talking now? We cannot hear you. Maybe the network is so bad now. Wait, not a time of joining. How about this time? <laughs> Finger crossed. Mm. Is it my bad? Next time we should do rehearsal things. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I uh, still cannot hear. Okay. Maybe we could uh... another try. Uh. Okay, he said everything was fine from him said, but uh... Not here. Mm. Oh, he will try uh reboot the laptop. 
in a fashion. But before that, we can we can continue our uh, uh, conversation discussion, uh, Porsche. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, your question was, uh, something is wrong with with your backup restore process, or? Yeah. So, um, I in my standalone cluster, mm -hmm. um, I tried to backup restore and it did not work then i reached out to in the community forums then i saw a, a response from b saying currently backup store is broken and he, he told us to wait for a couple of releases or at least next release and oh, so cool. i'm trying to check if it is restored i don't have this con context uh are you doing it on, on top of Kubernetes or uh, bare metal deployment? On, on top of Kubernetes. Oh yeah, that that part is isn't ready yet. Uh, as with the issue, uh, because something uh, you know the the current implementation of the the agent uh, assumes it's running uh in a bare oper operating system together with the um, the service the the meta and the storage process. And uh, when uh, the, pro the the agent is handling this uh, restore uh, request, the things the, the the you know the control chain cannot be uh, you know implemented in in current uh, implementation, but that is uh, on our uh, roadmap, and uh, we are actually working on that. So we aim to you know make it work like in 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 next. Uh, season so in in two or three months okay <laughs> yeah but before that uh, we we have to you, you can you can even do the backup uh, as i recall but the restore is with issues but so, how do i how do i uh, back up uh for, before the official support you know everything was uh, um, polished uh, for the containerized de deployment of the backup restore Maybe you have to uh, handle it from the underneath uh, s snapshot because uh, backup restore is actually the uh, higher abstraction uh, based on the uh, snapshot. It helps us do a lot of you know dirty works, uh, copy and paste, and uh, uh, file uh, file movement, something like that. Um, so in theory, it's still doable if we uh, we do the uh, snapshot thing and restore from the snapshot thing on my our own. It's still doable, I think. But we have to, yeah, we have to manip manipulate things uh, inside of the corresponding volume. You have to mount it somewhere, or you, you or you have to ensure the pod is uh, you know is runnable, and you access those uh, file system, and uh, you. You ensure the snapshot uh, binary is there. You 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 follow the snapshot procedure of documentation. Sure. So ideally, you can do that. I welcome back, Shintao. We can hear you now. Uh, good, good now. Uh, okay, yeah. sorry, sorry about okay. my computer. I'm I'm not sure what's going what went wrong today. Sorry. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, can I see my slide? Yes, crystal clear. Can I see my... Okay, okay, okay. Let's let, let's continue. So, so, so basically, we we are building a very large link list, uh, uh linking a, a set of uh, chunks. So for each column, not storage for each uh for each column, there will be many uh different number of column chunks. And we we support both dense format and uh, sparse format at the same time. For a sparse format, if if a uh, attribute of a particular particular record does not have a a, a non null value uh, in an in a column, we are going to skip its uh, 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 skip this record within that column so that we can re reduce the overall uh, memory consumptions. But for the dense layout, we are uh, storing all the attributes of all the records in all the columns regardless of whether it's a null value or it has uh, some non-null uh, values. So we, we support both formats. And within a column table, uh, which uh, there are 
uh, a linked list of uh, column chunks as shown in the previous slide. And within each column chunks, we are using a bitmap called row occupancy bitmap. Uh, this bitmap is going to mark uh, all the all the records whose attributes fall within this column chunk. They are marking whether this uh, record has a null value or a non null value in this column chunk. So if the if some bit is zero, it means this record does not have a real value. Uh, we actually skipped its physical storage, but it's it exists logic logically uh, in the data storage. And if some bit is one is true, it means we have a physical real value for that attribute for that record. It's, and that value is stored within this column chunk. So by using this row occupancy bitmap, we can uh, uh, we can deliver the same functionality uh, for in the sparse data layout. And in the denser data, data layout, we don't need this bitmap because we are basically storing uh, all the attributes of uh, all the records in 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 all the uh, chunks, and uh, because we are uh, allowing the users to 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 use various data types, and we we want to uh, store that data types still uh, in addition to their data, so we have introduced a da data structure called the type vector. So type vector, uh, a single type vector has a fixed length, which is about 32 bits or 64 bits. We fix its size so that we can easily manipulate it using the same, same intrinsics, like uh, AVX 512, AVX uh, 256, and so on. So we can use same intrinsics to accelerate uh, the operations within a single type vector. And for within a, a type vector, we are recording uh, the memory offsets for the attributes of the same data type within the, the column chunks. For example, if we have inserted 100 uh, attributes of the same integer 32 data type, we only need to mark its starting offset and its end offset. Uh, it, uh, we only need to mark its data type, uh, which is probably 0, 0, 0, 0. It's only four bits for the, for example, for the integer uh, 32 data type. And we only need to mark its uh, starting offset and end offset. So by by marking this data, we need we know that all the data between these two offsets have the data type of uh, some uh, some code, which is probably integer thirty two. So by encoding this in information within the type vector, we can record all the data types for all the attributes that we have stored within a data chunk and in a sequential way. In a sequential way. So within a data chunk, uh, because we are allowing different data types so that an, an attribute does not have a fixed size. So some attribute may be larger than the rest. So this is a trouble uh, if we are inserting data into a data chunk because we, we does not know um, uh, how much memory space is uh, that th this record will uh, end up uh, with using after we have inserted it. So we have we borrowed that this idea from the Postgres, uh, which is to insert the data from the head to the tail, and insert the type vectors from the tail to the head. So by doing this, we can always appending data to the uh, to the existing attributes at the end because this offset is marked uh, in the chunk header. So, so we can always append data to the attributes, and we can always append type vectors after existing type vectors because we mark this offset in the chunk header. So when this um, when these two offsets meet in the middle of this chunk, we know that this chunk is fully filled and we need to allocate a new chunk for incoming data. So this is the basic data structure uh, for, uh, for the column chunk where we store the attributes from the head to the tail and the type vectors from the tail to the head. And this format is what we learned from Postgres. It's actually uh, quite useful to support the storage of uh, data with various lens, uh, various lens. And uh, if, if we are allowing uh, users to use data with different types, we, we are basically allowing them to, to, to use data with different lens. So we, so we use this uh, setup. And we are also uh, uh, pro, uh, going to provide an index for this mean memory bounding table to accelerate uh, point lookups and range lookups. 
In, in this slide, I show an example of our ongoing work on providing a hash table index for the bending table. And within this index, uh, we are using several techniques to reduce the memory footprint of the memory consumptions of hash table itself, as well as the memory used to store all the hash keys because a hash key could be very long. And this long hash keys is going to be a problem if we are storing a lot of uh, entries in the hash table. So, so we use this fingerprint technology to, uh, to uh, pass a key as a string to it to a fingerprint and use this fingerprint as the key for the hash table. Uh, where uh, in which we use a delta try implementation, with, which is a very memory efficient implementation for hash table. And uh, uh, after the hash table, this key will uh, link us to a payload, and that payload is uh, stored in the column chunks of the bending tables. So by using this uh, set of data structures, we can achieve very fast point lookups. Oh my God, we, we, we lose you again. I wait, I, this is what I suggest. Um, so we probably finished the conversation with Posh for the BR part. And we need to work with uh, Shin Tao to make uh, do a recording of what uh, of his presentation and uh, re-edit the session so that it can be shared afterwards. Um, sure. it's <laughs> it's but, a, more than an hour now. Yep. Uh, we we give another try because I think it's it's already in the in the tail part. Uh, but. Uh, Shin Tao, can we hear? I will. I'm suggesting him to, you know, do a recording for the rest part and that we can share later. <laughs> uh, okay. Another try. Let's come back. I shouldn't help. As I uh like It's so very strange. Okay. Okay. As uh, uh, guys, uh, Shinto said it's almost finished. So maybe uh, this topic can can be call end now. Uh, do do you have any questions to Shinto so I can you know type him? Hi, Shinto. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah, do you have any questions? Uh, we can answer questions. Uh, we, we actually have finished all the slides. Okay. Uh, Porsche actually asked uh, how, uh, where we, we are using the binding table. So maybe you can give a brief. Uh... Yeah, I actually have a slide showing that. Uh, let me try to, you can hear me, right? I'm, I'm, yes, I'm yes. afraid of you. <laughs> yeah, I have a, sl a slide showing where we are using the spanning tables. 
here in the distributed site hub, we are using the spanning table to, to gather the data that we loaded from the storage and we transfer this data back to the GraphD. And between all the operators and also within each operator, they are consuming the data entries from the bending table and pro producing their results back to the bending table. So it's basically a, a data container that we use throughout the entire query processing uh, procedure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Ashinta, I have a question. Uh, so regarding uh -huh. regarding uh, your uh, what you are trying to refactor it, and uh, one of the points you highlighted was to avoid the rebuild. Uh, on this perspective, do you mean that uh, um, you uh, remove the the pointers of this uh, uh, table uh, object? So is that the where it uh, uh, you know save us from the rebuild because everything is uh, pointed with the offset instead of a, a pointer. <laughs> we, we lose you again, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Something's wrong with the... Wrong. Okay. Shin Shinha, we cannot hear you again. Maybe you, you have to. Oh yeah, yes. Also store our uh data sequentially in a you know connected connected way. It's all uh continually uh persistent. Yeah. Got it, got it. Um yeah, so we can, uh, you know, we can manip uh, we can, uh, you know, pass the this data as is. We don't have to, you know, rebuild uh, uh, everything uh, in in a po pointer. And uh, in case it's sparse, we have to. Okay, understand. Thank you, uh, thank you, Xin Tao. <laughs> uh, we we should have uh, I should have drive a rehearsal previously before we, we are doing this. I'm sorry for this, it's my fault. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Xun Tao. And uh, it's a quite, uh, you know, it's hardcore, but I think it's it's quite insight insightful for the, you know, for us and uh, maybe upcoming uh, guys joining our community to understand more of Nebula Graph and how it works underneath. Um, thank you so much. And uh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, Shintao uh, in the chatting, he says, sorry about this. It's not your fault. Um, okay, maybe we, 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 we come to, uh, I will share my screen. We come to a final uh, uh, part, the, the, the sync discussion. So we can continue um, a push if you have uh, any more to discuss and, and Alexander, well, we can do now. And afterwards we can close this. So, um, you know, since I'm going to make another try on the uh, backup and restore and get back to you on my list latest experience. But one thing for sure I would uh, like to mention mm -hmm. is uh, we are using Nebula uh, Helm charts for deploying uh, cluster uh, on Kubernetes. Yes. So the cluster, when I say, uh, are you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So the, the issue with the cluster is if I wanted to attach uh, additional uh, volumes uh, or uh, drives to the pod, uh, there is no, is there any way I can attach? No, no. Um... You know, we're doing it a uh, 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 Kubernetes fashion. So, although it's underneath the the, the persistent volume, but we we don't um, we don't uh, uh, suggest uh, users to actually uh, manipulate 
um, things on the volume level because the um, because the the parts uh, of the storage they, they are uh, they are stateful but they are binded to specific volume so we cannot uh, you know take over uh, by manual so it will it will be broken or uh, introduce conflict between our manipulation and the operator because operator operator somehow is you can treat it as another administrator you know to manipulate the the, the cluster and you just talk it with the crd the yaml file so i don't recommend uh, previously we have a conversation uh, regarding uh, um you want to leverage like what we are doing in nfs we in a non uh, cloud uh, application but in kubernetes uh, this isn't the, the uh, recommended way to doing that so even in, in in i want to understand this more let's say for example uh, the pvc uh, that you create for the storage do you use um single read write or uh, um, uh, read and many write what kind of um, configuration you have it's it's not uh, assumed uh, any uh, you know how how the stories was uh, lying on uh, we actually uh, suggest uh, use to not use read um, mm -hmm just instead uh, just just use a uh, you know a, a pv uh, spawned uh, by the cloud provider uh, or even uh, in certain cases uh, you can use the local storage because you can optionally to you know enable replica uh, on the storage space level so it's still uh, acceptable but uh, we just uh, recommend to use a, a fast uh backend uh pv provider so and that's all. what we have done what we have done is we attached a, 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 a prime ssd and a discs a pvc storage ssd storage mm -hmm. uh, the moment we uh, attach a, a uh ssd disk they they are um, oh, not read many right it is a single read only a single read not read many or yeah. not uh, write many right so yes. that means one pod can read and one pod can write to that ssd storage so uh, instead if we use like let's say uh, because of, we are all Azure, we are not using Amazon at all, AWS at all. Mm -hmm. So if I use uh, Azure uh, storage, uh, NFS drive, or Azure file drive, it is um, write many, read many drive. So uh, one drive um, I can attach and I can write as many storages uh, as needed. But thing is, I'm worried about the performance of Nebula using storage uh, disk as a, uh, disks as a storage versus SSD. Yes, I I don't recommend to enable the multiple read uh, or anything hack like this. Uh, the reason is uh, actually we can do that even because uh, you know the the operator itself is. Uh, uh, it's open source you can customize it and, and also you can even customize the all the resources in your kubernetes cluster by default is single write uh, multiple read i don't recall but you can do that but i don't re recommend because you cannot guarantee the performance for example uh, you know uh, although we are just using uh, a cloud uh, pro uh, you know you, the the, the uh, pv provided by azure or aws but uh, underneath there could be some kind of affinity, like maybe certain volume is sitting together uh, more close uh, with your pod, either it's in the NUMA, NUMA node awareness or you know the data switch uh, closeness. So when, uh, when 
disk mapping to serve a given pod or given node is uh, it's more guaranteed from my perspective. And uh, I don't think it's worth to you know re risk here because I think the database here is quite cri uh, critical, uh, mission critical situation. So it's not worth it to hack such multiple read uh, approaches. Another uh, reason is, uh, you know, in, in this whole operator concept, the disk are binded logically uh, one, uh, per one pod instance. So if you, you know, enable some sort of uh, multiple read, you, you have to break this concept. So you have to change a lot of things. I don't think it's even worth worth it. But uh, anyway, if we, we are, we know what we are doing, we, we can we can try it. And this is it's even uh, quite easy to enable, uh, you know, the PV in multiple uh, read actually. Uh, because so I- the, the, Probably the, the most simplest method here could be if we um, just think about it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, if um, the Helm charts allows an optional additional drive to be mounted on storage, let's think about it, mm -hmm. right? If, if I can mount an additional drive on storage, then all I have to do is run the backup and copy manually for now from uh, the local storage to uh to the additional volume i can move the data right um i don't think that's the case but uh, generally you can somehow do it because uh yeah the files are there but uh, there are still some running con uh context there you you mean there there could be some corruption if you just uh, copy uh, on the fly but uh that's more uh, doable. Actually, um, previous, uh, pr previously, I just I, I, I also looked into uh, uh, look into how we, we, we set this multiple read policy in the in the operator code, and I've, I actually find where we can change it, and I, we can talk about this offline, I think. And uh, after okay. you after you we, we change this this certain policy, add this in the CRD. Uh, we uh -huh. can enable, you know, snapshot thing, but maybe we don't just do the directly do the copy paste thing, but we can leverage the Nebula graph snapshot. We can like uh, mount another, uh, you know, tooling pod with some, you know, uh, some other uh, handy tools inside this pod and uh, enable the actually multiple read uh, of those uh, volumes together in, in map to uh, mount it to one pod so we can easily perform you know more hacky snapshot thing yeah I think that's totally doable yes and if okay. it's uh, it's considerable to be um, you know more general use case we can even trying to expose this uh, policy multiple re policy in the in the upstream operator uh, repository and by just okay. by default it's, it's a single read but we can try that yeah agree. okay thank you that that would be awesome and one more thing um the meta d yes uh the meta d currently expects a separate uh volume for data and the log yes can we can we use one volume and split a uh, split volume uh, uh technically it's doable in in, in 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 fact we actually uh previously that's our implementation and we involved yeah in i saw separate. that actually yeah i saw that actually previously you had that way and then you required two separate thing because that is very expensive having two uh, this because the volume is very low and I'm not sure why I really understand you know why you guys um, uh, made it a separate yes big, maybe that the intuition of this uh, change was uh, in future we can enable tiered you know vol volume provider for different usage like we can use much slower you know PV here in in the log but we didn't uh, go that far, but 
uh, now I understand your concern. So we can talk about how we want to mitigate to provide the flexibility, possibility to enable this to, you know, to, to reduce the cost. Yes. Okay. And That's thank you. Point. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, when I write, um, we write to the um, Nebula storage, currently we should use um, Nebula Exchange, but currently we are um, using insert operations to insert data into Nebula Graph. But what I'm seeing is number of SSD files on the storage are huge. Uh, yeah. why, do, why is it happening like that? Oh yeah, that's the LSM tree, the, you know, the, the, the right implement, you know, the, you you will have like a, a multiplied uh, like three or, or more uh, times when you are writing initially, but uh, after uh, that's the by nature of the LSM tree. But after a compaction, it will shrink to the expected you know um, multiplier of the storage. I, I tried. I I tried to compact. Mm -hmm. um, even then, I see a huge number of SSD files. How many, uh, what, uh, is, how, what is the math here? How many SSD files I'm supposed to see? Uh, Xintao, do you have a, a quick idea on, on this? But as I recall, we have some, um, on the file numbers, we have a configurable uh, uh, a place. So I can check and come back to you later. Actually, we talk about this configuration in our discussions last week. Uh, regarding this, uh, the the file size and the file numbers, so it's configurable actually. But I don't have okay. an idea on uh, by default how many we should expect. I don't have an idea for now, right now. But we can talk <laughs> offline later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's that's that would be another wonderful uh, thing that can help us. Another and, thing. Sorry, interrupt. Another thing come to my mind. As I recall, you would like to request the uh no two uh, vector uh, algorithm in our you know nebula analytics do you remember we we don't have this analytics uh, offered previously last time we were face to face yes. talking now we support yes. it we support it recently yeah i i send your re your your request to the team and it's already supported and we will have it's a release so, uh, yeah in, in the, the thing weeks. is mm. no two vector when you say no to VEC, it is, um, so let me say this. We have our graph so far in our POC, we are using for uh, knowledge graph, medical knowledge graph, right? Mm -hmm. So when we do our graph analytics, no to VEC um, using your implementation, yeah. it is running out of space because you are using graphics library, Spark graphics library. Yeah. And that is very, very, I don't know <laughs> how much yeah, what the benchmark you know, have done. The advantage of graph X is uh, most, uh, all of the uh, data engineering team has the competence on, on this infrastructure and on, on this, uh, you know, this data stack, but uh, it's not a perfect or it's not a, in, in a good reputation in the you know resource memory uh, utilization. And that's why we, we provide alternative in our enterprise offering in analytics. But you can, you, you can request another uh, trial of the analytics to, to see how many, uh, how you know, the memory uh, utilization comparing to the, you know, the, the GraphX Nebula algorithm. You can check. Okay, I will, I will definitely try for another request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, yeah, if I sure. use the tiny graph, let's say a thousand nodes, thousand edges, your implementation works. But if I have, let's say, a billion nodes yeah. and edges, uh, it is crashing. Yeah, it's that's doing very, very bad performance. Yes, it's it's basically the vanilla uh, graph X implementation that yeah. you know yeah. a lot. Mm, yeah, because uh, it's usable, so a lot of co community users can, you know, uh, benefit from it. But uh, when it comes to, um, you know, resource utilization requirements, 
So it's better to go with the uh, Nebula analytics. Yeah. Okay. I will ask for another extension and I try out. So when okay. is the next meeting? Uh, four weeks later. Okay. So then I'll yeah. come back by that time and I'll get back to you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Also about uh, graph uh, algorithms. So yeah. uh, we are quite new in the Nebula graph. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I find Mila more with uh, Tiger Graph, with uh, Neo4j. And um, uh, do you have a plans uh, to uh, create some Turing full language or map reduce inside the database to be able uh, not run algorithms uh, as the previous speaker said on the uh, separate infrastructure with the graphics? But inside the database, yes, I hear that. Uh, I, I know that uh, there is a, a graph uh, analytic Nebula analytics. Uh, yeah. But uh, one of the main, uh, let's say, one of the main uh, uh, point for analytics is uh, create own graph uh, algorithms and. Uh, uh it's uh, uh, uh sometimes uh, you need to modify uh some standard algorithms uh, uh, but in many cases you need to tune uh, uh to work with particular business case uh so how you solve this for now or in, in future you plan to solve uh I just try to understand the, the way from the business task uh, to the uh, running algorithm on the uh, graph database and using the graph uh, features, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I um, um, want to understand this pass. Uh, good question, Alexander. Um, actually, um, we... Uh, in long term, we have uh, ambition and uh, plan to implement a more uh, analytical, um, you know, native uh, graph D. But uh, for now, we don't have this uh, kind of offering. Um, but uh, the analytics itself, because we are, you know, the, we have a separation uh, design between the computation, the graph layer and the storage layer. So that's actually bring our benefits that you can treat uh, an, a Nebula analytics in some, in some way as our native um, analytical platform. But as I understand, you are expecting, you know, to do some more um, procedure thing in a, in the written query instead of calling uh, uh, analytical platform. You want the flexibility to just read like the Neo4j APOC, you know, to to do some um, more complex uh, analytical thing in 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 Nebula Graph itself instead of other platform. Is that your uh, most concern? Uh, for, for for example, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is some standard algorithms uh, uh, like page rank or like this uh, centrality uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you need to modify this one and uh, uh, for some for some reason for some cases uh, not only uh, parameters uh, of these algorithms uh, that are exposed uh, but uh, uh, some logic changes the logic of uh, algorithm yeah 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 and um... uh, I got you. Uh, for, yeah, now, the, uh -huh. for, for now, for now, actually, um, if if GraphX can fit your requirements, you know, on the re resource utilization perspective, uh, in that case, uh, you can actually use our uh, Nebula algorithm. You can call it from a, a command line in sub um, Spark submit, but in that case, you lose the capability on you know modify or uh, you know. Uh, change mod, uh, change uh, how the page rank behaves, but uh, in 
if you are coding it in, in a Spark way, you can do the uh, Scala thing to, you know, just to uh, leverage it with more uh, modifications. And you can even uh, fork the page rank and uh, change some of the how it iter iterate. And that's doable. And that's if you are uh, with the background of Scala, which I don't have, uh, that will be uh, easier. Uh, even your, your Python background, you can use the PySpark. That's still doable. On the other hand, we uh, yeah, not, uh -huh. on the other hand, we one of our community users are maintaining a fork of Nebula Graph that they introduce something similar to Neo4j APOC, and they will upstream to uh, it to our uh, community in upcoming uh, months. So I'm not sure if that can fit your um, requirement, but. Uh, uh, the, the cons of that implementation is we it's not a, a map reduce um, fashion. You you have to if you want to leverage a lot of resources. You have to have one single huge graph D to to leverage that. I'm not sure if that will potentially. Oh. Yes, uh, um, good to expect from the um, database and work with a full graph. Uh, with uh, any number of nodes, vertices, etc., and create some uh, steps uh, using uh, all possible ways, <laughs> let's say. The implementation of the, uh, in the graphics, implementation of the algorithms is uh, quite uh, interesting because uh, it's uh, you. You need to use uh, Spark infrastructure, Spark uh, yes. map. You need to map data, etc. And it's uh, the simple algorithm uh, can take uh, uh, one thousand uh, code of uh, lines, and uh, you typically solve. Uh, infrastructure questions like copy data from here to here, et cetera, but uh, not focused on the algorithms. Got it. Uh, it it's not it's that, a, uh, yeah, it's, it's have some, a uh, lot of footprints and actual uh, layers and it's not self-contained. I got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Xuntao, do you have any, uh, you know, inside ideas on how we would like to, you know, bring a more smoothly uh, integrated way to, you know, call any um, algorithms in, inside of Natural Graph? We have such plans for now. Uh, you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have talked about that. So we are planning to um, provide um, a set of APIs uh, to expose our kernel functions to a, a algorithm layer. And what, for whatever graph algorithms that you want to run, you can call these APIs to, to load data, to write data, to manage it, and all kinds of uh, uh, operations. And this algorithm can utilize uh, the number graph to, uh, to, to do its own job. So this is what uh, we're planned. So, so uh, we we we'd like to use this um, uh, the, 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 uh, this design for gen generic graph algorithms. We also want to extend it to uh, GNN uh, graph neural network um, and tasks. Uh, uh, yeah, I can I can uh, for some bring some examples ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have the uh, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, the first task it's uh, uh, load uh, all transactions uh, to the graph database. Mm -hmm. it's the first task, and the second task, for example, for anti money laundering, it's uh, find the uh, cycle uh, between nodes. Uh, for example, when uh, first node uh, transfer money to second node, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and for example, it can be. 10 or more uh, uh, nodes uh, in this uh, cycle, in this loop. And we need to find them. Yeah, I got it. I got you because I, 
I'm a, you know, I'm a GCP fan and I watch how uh, BigQuery evolved and I noticed a uh, uh, couple of months before they announced the, uh, you know, the more capabilities, they, they can do a lot of, you know, machine learning thing just in SQL, it, it, it's fantastic. And um, mm -hmm. we, we will bring this, you know, idea to, to the team and uh, Xintao is listening. <laughs> Uh, and uh, another thing is you're you're mentioning that you want to do the node and loop thing. Are you mentioning you are doing something like air uh, air uh, sorry airflow, just a DAG thing? You want to create a you know uh, DAG on on different uh, input output of different tasks? Are you saying that DAG? Uh, mm, no, it's uh, like uh, money transfer when. Uh, one uh, people uh, transfer money to second, second to third, third to uh, fifth, uh, etc. And uh, in this loop can be multiple uh, steps, but the money at the end come back to the first person. So it's, it's it about transactions? It's one of the, yes, it's about transactions uh, uh, and the task is uh, anti-money laundering okay. uh, in the uh, financial sector in the fintech. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, Xuntao, can, can you still hear us? Uh, we are actually bringing the transaction ACID uh, to Nebula Graph uh, later. And the Xuntao is the one of the guys who is driving this design, actually. He even gave a topic on, on how we want we want to design this in, in our con user conference uh, several weeks before. We will have it, yeah, in the future we will have it, and it's not too far from now. As I you, you as mean I you mean tra transaction like uh, classical understand you mean you mean uh, uh, confirmation of the transaction, I believe. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, in in my uh, question, it was uh, an, an analytics uh, task when you you need to find the uh, loop uh, uh, between uh, the, these uh, transactions. Um, I okay. I, I didn't get. Uh, it's not I think simple. Maybe, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, because maybe I don't have the you know needed uh, uh, domain uh, knowledge on this, but. Uh, Maybe this this question you can send send us in the GitHub discussion or issues, and uh, you know share your stories mm -hmm. on that so we can learn from this particular question or requirement. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't quite Thank understand. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you have other uh, questions? No. Okay. And feel free to uh, you know reach me uh, from from the uh, from, from the Slack as well. Oh, uh, Shintao actually is, is typing the answer on transactions. Uh, if you can, I'm reading it for, for transaction. We're working on fully ACID compliant transaction support, and we're going to offer it in the uh, next generation, next gen of Neville Graph, probably in in two, 2023. That's for the transaction and for the anal analytics uh, uh, questions and the requirements. You can, you know, uh, share it in in discussion or Slacks, and you can reach me uh, in Slack as well when you, when needed. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, so um i think we can call this a day it's a it's a it's a it's a quite long uh meeting this today and uh thank you everyone so uh see you in uh next uh, month bye guys okay